the Palmetto State KS-47, let's check it out. Guys, I'm a big fan of the AR-15. It is my go-to rifle. Uh, but one of the things about 5.56 is sometimes it has it can be underpowered, uh, especially in actual combat conditions. Uh, and so having an AR-15 in 7.62 by 3.9 is something that I've always liked the thought of. But any that I've messed with usually t have problems. They have certain issues, uh, especially with reliability. And also the magazines are fairly expensive uh, if you get the 7.62 for your AR-15. Uh, one of the things though that I really like is the hybrids. And I know CMMG with their Mutant was a big plus for me. I love that rifle, but it's bigger, it's heavier. It's actually based more on an AR-10 style. Uh, the KS-47 by Palmetto State kind of combines a lot of great features. And so we're going to take a look at this. Uh, there's a lot of cool things. It is a hybrid. It takes AK-47 mags, and yet it has all the controls of your AR-15. AR or AK, why not have both? And I want to thank PSA for sending the KS-47 for this review. Guys, there's been a long debate between the AR-15 and the AK-47. Uh, the durability of the AK is world-renowned. The 7.62 by 39 has better knockdown power. The AR-15 is a little more modular. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do. There's a lot of aftermarket support. The 5.56 uh, and the AR system is typically more accurate. The mounting options for scopes is superior with the AR-15. And there's just a lot of things that I personally like with the AR-15, but the AK-47 is definitely one of those rifles that's at the top of my list. And it's been proven, both of these have been proven, in conflicts all over the world. So it's no big surprise that a lot of companies have tried to kind of put the two together. Uh, this is the KS-47 by Palmetto State Armory. It's the Gen 2. And the Gen 1, there were a few things they had to upgrade, which they did with the Gen 2. If you want the accuracy, the mounting capability, and yet you want the AK-47 7.62 by 39 knockdown power. Now we're going to make sure the gun is unloaded, drop our magazine, check the chamber, and the gun is empty. Uh, one of the things, it does come with a P-Mag, one of the Magpul AK-47 P-Mags. It rocks in really easily. I like the way this thing fits. It seems to ride against this back lip right here. And a little easier to me than the standard AK. And you have your magazine release right here. It's a large paddle. Uh, you can get it with your trigger finger like this, or you can grab it here. Uh, and it's ambidextrous. And it does have kind of some grooves on here that make it easy to grab hold of. This particular model has the Magpul Mo furniture with a Mo stock and a Mo pistol grip. And again, your AK-47 third gen magazine. We're using one of the Trijicon TA-44 mini ACOGs. Uh, this is one and a half power, but it uses the ACS reticle by Primary Arms. These are available at Primary Arms. This particular scope is made for your 7.62 by 39. They also make it for the 5.56. And I have an American Defense QD mount on here, which this is my preferred mount. It has the PSA M-Lock handguard. I believe there's some other options you can get. This is the 15 inch because this is a 16 inch barrel. But I like the relief right here of the Picatinny off the top. It's just at the front where you need it for sights. Then you have it back here where you can put different scopes. And it has anti-rotational tabs right here to keep it in place. Now the barrel being 16 inches, it has a more of a heavy profile toward the back and it comes down, but it still has a pretty full feature all the way through. The barrel is black nitrided, it's CMV 4150 steel. But these barrels have been permanently pressed into the receiver, so that's one of the things that's going to help with accuracy. And it just has a standard A2 flash hider that you can switch if you want. It's a low pro 0.75 gas block. 
and it is carbine length gas system. Now you do have QD points on either side of your handguard, uh, but you do have again this really heavy profile barrel. So when you take your standard QD swivel, it doesn't quite fit because it butts up against the barrel. Uh, so that's just one thing to note. And this was actually made for your AR-15. Now the receiver is a black anodized finish. It's 7075 T6 aluminum. And these are definitely dedicated for the KS-47. Uh, you'll notice the style here. And of course this accepts the AK mag. So you're getting what you're getting. Uh, but one thing is with the upper, I mean you still have your brass deflector. You still have your forward assist. And you have your standard AR dust cover. Uh, a lot of the parts are compatible with your AR-15. Standard AR charging handle, uh, which honestly I would switch this out for a paddle release, a larger paddle, maybe a BCM gunfighter. Uh, one of the big reasons is because this is a heavy spring in here. In fact, it's a 308 spring and it has a heavy buffer. And so it's going to be a little more tight to bring back, especially if you're putting an optic on here. But that's an easy fix because it accepts any of your AR charging handles. And the castle nut has been staked. It is a mil spec AR-15 buffer tube. But looking at this side, you can tell that the lower receiver is definitely dedicated for the KS-47, uh, even though the rear part of it is very much like the AR-15. And then here, uh, this, these are machine pieces, again, 7075 T6 aluminum, which is up to mil spec. Fire control system right here, safe and fire. Now the weight of the rifle on my scale without the optic with the magazine is 6 pounds 8 ounces. Even with this heavy tapered profile barrel, it's still a very lightweight firearm. We're going to take a look under the hood. We're going to use a 762 by 39 Bring this out. Now this one features the EPT or Enhanced Polish Trigger and it's a nickel boron finish on here. Uh, it just makes it really smooth. Even though it's mil spec, it kind of cuts out all the grit. It's really nice. Now you can switch this out for any of your aftermarket AR-15 triggers unless it has the single pack like the CMMG or the Timney. But you can put like a Geisley in here or whatever. I mean, it, it accepts your standard trigger system. Now it has one of the AR-10 springs in here to really help with reliability and it has one of the H1 buffers. And so this is going to be a solid system. I mean it's timed to work with any of your 7.62 by 3 dime. And it is a mil spec buffer tube. Now let's go ahead and pull out our bolt and bolt carrier. We're going to check this out. Again we're using our standard AR-15 charging handle. Now here we have the KS-47 bolt carrier and then this is your standard mil spec AR bolt carrier. Uh, this is black nitrided, so it's a really nice finish to it. has the grade 8 fasteners that are properly staked. One thing you'll notice right here are these relief cuts toward the back. And uh, this is probably to save a little weight and also for debris and things like that. You'll see even on the bottom it has a relief cut. Now here at the bottom is the KS-47 firing pin. Uh, it's just a touch longer. In fact, it's almost imperceivable. It's about a quarter of a millimeter. But this is made to be able to set off primers, especially hard primers and steel-cased ammunition, military primers. So it's going to give you a little added advantage. But overall, they're pretty much very close. And the bolt carrier is made from 8620 steel. Here I have an AR-15 bolt on the left, and then we have the KS-47 on the right. You can see from this direction, they look very close. Uh, but once you get at the front, you'll notice how much thinner the KS-47 bolt is, the face. And of course that helps to accommodate the 7.62 by 39. And the bolt is made from 9310 steel. It is black nitrided. Now here you can see with the barrel profile that this is enlarged to make it easier to insert the 30 caliber bullet. So it has one ramp that goes right in and feeds very reliably. Now of course this is an aluminum receiver but it does have steel pins here and right here at the bottom. And this will allow you to use your standard steel European mags with no problem. Guys, I love the AR-15 rifle, and that's one of the things that the KS-47 does. It just gives you all the same controls. One of the big downsides to the AK-47 is mounting optics. And of course, there are options, but they're not as dedicated as an AR, especially with this top rail. It makes it really strong. It's a solid rail system. With the handguards, I mean, there's so many parts and accessories available for the AR-15 over the AK-47, even though those have grown. And so this, to me, just shooting it with all the Mo furniture, I mean, it's like shooting an AR-15 until you remove the magazine. <laughs> it seems just to go right in. Sometimes with AKs, uh, it seems to be a little bit, can be a little bit difficult until you master it. Uh, but with all the controls the same and just the way it shoots, I mean, it's got a 
just a good flat shooting uh, feel to it. Uh, it belies the AK-47 round or the 7.62 by 39 round. And uh, a lot of that has to do with the heavy buffer spring back here and the way the gas impingement system is set up. We really enjoyed shooting this rifle. Zero malfunctions. I mean, we shot and shot. We had no problems uh, with this. And I love how thin and just so handy that this rifle is. I mean, it just seems to just nestle in those right places. To me, it's like shooting an AR-15, you know, with a little more punch, but yet it's not too bad. It's an excellent gun to take to the range. Changing out the charging handle for an extended lever is something I definitely am going to do with this one. In fact, I'm going to put a BCM gunfighter on here. Let me attach one of the 1-6 to six primary arms ACSS reticle scopes, and we got this out at just 50 yards. Uh, we could have, of course, gotten it out to 100. It would have been a better, but this is a five-shot group, each one. And guys, I'm telling you, even though this was only 50 yards, this rifle is very capable of getting excellent accuracy. So guys, if you like the 7.62 by 39 caliber, but you really want it in that AR configuration, this to me is one of the best options on the market. Uh, you know, it's just got all the controls that are the same. Uh, but one big thing about this is, especially taking it hunting, uh, like for hogs or coyotes or even deer. I mean, this would make an excellent round to be able to hunt with. And it still has that light, thin package. Again, it's got all the AR controls. You're not going to get quite the accuracy you get with 5.56 or 2.23, but you're still getting excellent accuracy with this rifle. Now guys, probably to me, one of the biggest appeals of the KS-47, other than it's just uber reliable, and just a lot of the things we talked about, is the price. Uh, these are $6.99 on the Palmetto State website, including the free float handguard, the Magpul furniture, and the PMAG. Uh, you don't get optics, you don't get sights. Uh, and then if you get the basic model, which has the A2 furniture, which is base, it's $5.99. So, I mean, it's really coming in at a really low price compared to other comparable rifles. And PSA is top quality, guys. Um, you know, they really do a great job. And so, check out PSA. And again, I want to thank PSA for sending the KS-47 Gen 2. This is an excellent little rifle. Rubber Dummies is one of the best training tools on the market, and you get a 10% discount using Suit00 when you click the link down in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. But it's still definitely very excellent. But it's still, but it's still. Man, it just stopped when the party started. I know. Then I have the American Defense Manufacturing uh, QD Sling. And I have the American Defense QD Sling. Okay.